And then I was like thinking about like the plot of it. It's like, whatever. I talked to my chat about, you know, what's the plot? It's just, it's just the same shit again. Like they take Jennifer okay. to hell. I'm going to tell you the plot. Yeah. So he's got a girlfriend. Yeah. They take her. The demons. Whoever. Yeah. I don't even... Yeah. And, and then he puts on a mask and becomes and a big goes. guy yeah. and he goes. That's pretty much it. Yeah. It's like... It's like... You take Mario and you put a mask and some blood. That's the story. Yeah, pretty much. Time to talk about games. Play my Brian and Mike. I'm on it. I'm retro. Video game show. Yes, we talk about games. And some sounds are the stuff. Like Star Trek. Hello and welcome to this episode of Talk About Games. It's time to talk about <laughs> games with Ryan and Mike. Hey, Ryan, did you know that we have a theme song now? Oh, I do. In our old Talk About Games show, did we have a theme song? Well, we did, but we didn't share it with the audience. <laughs> <laughs> we would... <laughs> I forgot about that. We talk about games. Yeah, we talk about games. Um <laughs> Anyway, so that's what we're doing. We're talking about games. It's the Halloween season. Oh boy, look, I have my my Friday the 13th hoodie on just to show you how Halloween-y I am. And I have just a blue thing on because I'm dead inside. And what's more Halloween than being dead inside? <laughs> He's, are you cosplaying a victim? <laughs> I'm just yeah. curious. Uh, we have several games today. As you can probably already tell, we've got a bunch of Splatterhouse games out. Now, what... This is one that isn't mine. So what's this one? This is Splatterhouse 2 for... That's the, the Japanese MSX. Splatterhouse 2. Oh, no, this is uh, Mega Drive. Yeah. So oh, that's, that's cool. the that's just the Japanese cover. Yeah, so that's Splatterhouse 2. I'm going to be talking about Splatterhouse 2. I played the American version of it, and it's a tough game. And uh, I've also got here Splatterhouse 3. We can talk about that. This is the Xbox 360 Splatterhouse, which I haven't played the yet. Um, but people are very divided on that one. Everybody's like, "Oh, you got to you got to play that one." And other people are like, "Don't play that one. Fuck that one." You know, it's it's one of those Zelda two situations. You know, <laughs> where it's very divided. Um, but before we get to that, yeah. First of all, I'll tell you my game is Clock Tower. Okay, for get, for PlayStation, which we are going to talk Tower. about. We will get to that. But what I wanted to talk about is I I had never played it. But I played it to prepare for this episode. Yeah. And that's I played Wampaku Graffiti or the Famicom Splatterhouse. Okay. And I thought, I've always thought it was cool. And for the longest time, I didn't really know that it fit in with Splatterhouse. I didn't really know much about it. Because it, like, people call it Wampaku Graffiti. Exactly. But it is Splatterhouse. But um I I've played that game quite a bit before over the yeah. years. Um, and... I honestly, I think that's my favorite of all the Splatterhouse games. It's, yeah. It's a little easier than, than the other ones, and it doesn't really have the same vibe because it's more, I'll tell you what it is. It's like with Gradius. You have Gradius like three or something, and then you have, which would be like Splatterhouse two. Right. And then you have Parodius. Parodius. So Parodius basically would be like Wampaku Graffiti, which isn't a bad thing. Like I like cute em ups and, you know, that kind of thing. A lot of Nintendo games or Famicom games don't have a lot of character. It's very straightforward. It's, oh, you, you go left to right, A jumps, B shoots, whatever. And it's very basic. Mm -hmm. This game has so much character. And it has very basic control. You jump and you use your axe. And you move left to right and that's it. Later on you get a shotgun too. Okay. Yeah. But... The the fact that the controls are so limited, there is a lot of strategy to it. There's a lot of situations where the enemies have projectiles, and you could choose whether whether to dodge them or to temporarily take them out of the fight by by hitting them. Mm. And sometimes it's good to do it, and sometimes it's good to just dodge. I mean, I can't think of a game that's more Halloween than that game as far as old... Um, games because it's just it's got like pumpkins all over it and and ghosts and zombies and dracula and they it's a mishmash of yeah. everything that you can think of when you think of horror and halloween but to top it off like the gameplay is really fun and it's just like a really quality game and it's a damn shame that we didn't get it in the u.s like, like we should have because it's like it's a top shelf nes game there's like like i said before there's so many nes games where you're like come on really mm. but this game 
The sprites are big and colorful. Everything's expressive. There's fun little story segments that don't take away from gameplay. There is bosses where the the difficulty and the thought of fighting the boss is based on like mechanics in the game. It's not like they just throw a bunch of bullets on the screen. It's like, it's like, no, how do I beat this guy? I have to think about it with my limited tool set. Yeah. It's super cool. Yeah, no. Um, I, yeah, I love all of it. I remember, um, there, there's a boss fight where there's like turkeys flying out of an oven and it's very much like, you have to know uh, exactly what to do. Like you got to hit the, you know, uh, knives out of the way and then go hit the the turkeys and whatever. I think that like at the end of the game, I want to say the final thing is like a pumpkin that you got to kill. It's been a long time since I've beaten that game. It's just a shame that we didn't get it like in the U.S. Yeah, it's um, when I fought that boss because because I, I, I got reasonably far into it but it's definitely a game i want to come back to and, and fight more when i got to that boss the first time i fought him i didn't hit i i didn't think you could hit the knives yeah and when i started punching the knives and knocking them out i get really aggressive yeah but don't get too aggressive like this is a game where you have to conserve every health point yeah there's enough like candy and things to get health back that's the other thing it's a halloween game candy for health that's awesome. Yeah, I, I, mem- I remember this game. It's like easier than some of the other Splatterhouse games, but that's not that doesn't mean it's necessarily easy. Later in the game, you get like the shotgun, and I remember you have to do a lot of like pretty difficult platforming. Yeah. Uh, later on, like you have to make it like over a bridge and stuff, and like you can you can fall down and you have to you know get set back to the beginning. And it is one of those games where you know you can make it to a boss and then when they set you back you go back to the very beginning and one of the things that i really like about this game probably actually i like it more than splatterhouse 2 is the fact that you get limited continues um i, I think, think you, you get four you get like four or five continues yeah. and i like that because if you have unlimited continues it's like you're gonna beat the game as long as you keep playing right pretty much yeah uh whereas everybody says splatterhouse 2 like oh that's the hard one splatterhouse 2 but splatterhouse 2 is infinite continues so i was i was playing it and yes it is very hard and if, if you tried to do no death or something it would be like super hard right but the fact that it's unlimited continues i was able to beat it because you just keep playing it and you eventually you figure it out and get through it one of the things i like about one pocket graffiti is there is more conventional platforming in it. I think the other Splatterhouse games, it kind of gets kind of samey mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, you're moving through rooms in the house, you're going left to right. I mean, there's like the boat and things like that, but the platforming in it, in regular Splatterhouse, there's there's stuff on the ground that will deal damage to you. Oh, yeah. But... Like there's spikes that come up. Yeah, ground, but it, like it, to me, it's hard for me, and this might just be me. It's hard for me to find out like where I'm supposed to jump. It comes or, like, through trial and error. Yeah, exactly. In this game, it's way more clear what's bad, what's good. Yeah, in yeah. Wampaku Graffiti, you don't. It's not as particular. Yeah, it's just more like a classic side scroller type of game, and, and right. I find that that makes it more fun. Like I said, I think Wampaku. Juan Paco Graffiti, that's like, I, I think it's a better game, Yeah, personally. Um, I mean, I don't know if you want, want me to get into talking about Splatterhouse 2 yet, but, um, like, Splatterhouse 2 is, like, I like it. It's got, like, beautiful graphics. All, and, in fact, actually, honestly, all, all the, Splatter, the Splatterhouse games look great. And we shouldn't, you know, go too far into talking about Splatterhouse when, you know, first mentioning, you know, it was an arcade game yes. originally. And... But most people, I feel like, knew Splatterhouse from being on the TurboGrafx-16. Yeah. You know, it's like one of the big TurboGrafx-16 games that people talk about. Right. Um, and that game's good, but I feel like the later ones made it, like, more interesting. Yeah, so when the TurboGrafx-16 was going out, um, there was, like, uh, Toys R Us ran this bundle. And the bundle was like, we got to get these games out of here. We got to make more room for Genesis and yeah. Super Nintendo. Man, I miss Toys R Us. And Toys R Us had like, you get a TurboGrafx-16, you could get like 16 games. I think it was like 16 game deal. Yeah. And I think like the big titles that were in there, it was like Air Zonk and Bonk's Adventure and Splatterhouse. Like it was a very like limited set of titles, but yeah. they were all like really solid. Right. And I go to my mom, I'm like, hey, hey, mom, um, uh, 
I would really like this this Turbo Graphic 16 bundle. And she's like, no fucking way. Man. Isn't that funny? I I remember going you know, go to the toy stores back in the day. And yeah. Like, sometimes you'd go and you'd get something, but a lot of times you wouldn't. Uh, right. I remember specifically because a lot of times I'd go to Toys R Us or something or KB yeah. and be like, oh, can I have this toy? And then your parents would get it for you, yeah. and that was great. But it was always it was always the worst feeling when you go and your parents right. wouldn't get it for but, you. But they're like, they're like, you have a Genesis. You don't want that crap. You want this crap? That's the one that they're like clearancing out. Your parents out. are like Genesis like fans. They're, they're like, they're like fan you have a fucking Genesis. What do you want with this turbo what do you want? graphic shit? <laughs> what do you want with this? It's like bonks on Nintendo. Like, what are you what are you talking about? Right? They they were like adamantly against it. And I think it's because they were like the beta VHS wars had happened. Uh, so like beta VHS was like the console wars for my parents. Maybe so they didn't want to spend the money on so the like, console. So they're like, you got to pick one. Yeah. You, you got you got to pick one. You got to support your your team. Yeah. Right? Um, I, I did end up, you know, I was a Super Nintendo kid. That was the one I got first. But like, I wouldn't have come close to playing a game like Splatterhouse. If I didn't have a Genesis, like it opens up this whole other, other type of game yeah. that you don't get on Nintendo. This is not, not a really. Nintendo game. N oh no, it's absolutely like a Genesis or Turbo Graphics game. It, <laughs> like you know, we've talked about this before. It's like Turbo Graphics and Genesis had more of that, like not adult, but it was like for teenagers, right? Not for children. Where Nintendo was more for kids. Yeah, you know, like under t you're under ten, you're playing Nintendo kind of kind of deal. Um, and I felt like, you know, that made you want to play. If you didn't have it, it made you want to play those Genesis games. It's just, oh, it's got blood and it's got gore yeah. and all that stuff. And that's probably, I mean, maybe that's why we didn't get some of those games on Nintendo. Or they, they had Wampaku Graffiti for Famicom in Japan, but we didn't get on NES. Maybe they thought it was too... It was, it I mean, was the, too the vampire much. in it in the beginning on the first level is giving the middle finger... That's, yeah, that's a problem. That that yeah, that would be a problem for Nintendo. They just edit out the pixel. He just holds up the. There's so much of that though. Yeah, going from from Famicom to NES. There's yeah. so many things where they make changes. Well, how about the? Um, I forget exactly what it's called, but it's like the patent Kun game, which yeah. is like a general patent thing where it says insert into fucking box. Yeah, you know that. I, I have a copy of that. It's for fa it's for Famicom Disk System. Okay, and it's like, but that game sucks anyway. It's just like tanks going around. It's like whatever. But uh. but when it when it's a shame, that one doesn't matter because the game right. sucks. But Wampaku Graffiti matters. It, also, none of this matters now because you can just download a fucking emulator and play any right. anyway. Yeah. So it like this conversation is like a <laughs> conversation to be had in uh, 1998. Right. It's like, boy, I, I, you you know. And, but that's the thing. Speaking of that, like like Wampaku Graffiti, like that's one of the few games that people knew about. Like before emulators were big and before I think people would see it in magazines. They'd and be like, see oh, it. Play that. They would like, like, like there was there was like conversations about it. And it was always like, like on the periphery for me. Like I, I, I knew of the game at the very early on, but I didn't play it until now. Yeah, which is which is crazy because it wasn't it wasn't really clear what was happening. Yeah. Yeah. Um. But yeah, it's fantastic. If you haven't played Juan Paco Graffiti, you definitely should. Um. It's a shame we didn't get it here. It's a. It's a. It's a very fun game. Um. But I want to get into talking about uh, Splatterhouse yeah. Two a little bit. So Splatterhouse Two, for one thing, I like the cover. It's got like it's got al like Alien. Yeah. You know. And uh, so he's back again. Rick's back again. And I was like thinking about like the plot of it. It's like whatever. I talked to my chat about. You know what's the plot? It's just it's just the same shit again. Like they take Jennifer okay. to hell. I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you the plot. Yeah. So he's got a girlfriend. Yeah. They take her. The demons. And the, shit. Whoever. Yeah. I don't even. Yeah. And, and then he puts on a mask and becomes and a big goes. guy yeah. and he goes. That's pretty much it. Yeah. It's like it's like you take Mario and you put a mask and some blood. That's the story. Yeah. Pretty much. So. um the graphics are phenomenal in this yeah. game. Uh, it's a beautiful game to look at. Yes, you get like the club kind of like, I mean, they even show it on the cover, but in the game, you'll get clubs and stuff. And the thing people remember from Splatterhouse is you take the club or the two by four and you whack the enemy and they splatter against the wall. But this game does other things too. Like when you're fighting the bosses, sometimes you'll kill the boss and blood will splatter on the screen and stuff like that. So I like that they really, 
it does have a lot of gore. When you kill the enemies, you take a, like a club and you like bash their brains in, and then they go into like a puddle on the ground and stuff like that. And it's uh, it it is a lot of fun. The the problem with this game is um, it's tough, but it's the reason it's tough is because it's very particular. Yes, and it's um, it's not that the controls well. There is something that's bad with the controls. There's okay. a slide, and doing the slide, you have to, like, jump in the air and then hit diagonally down and right to, like, slide. And it's So, like, a, like a Hadouken motion? It's very hard to do. Yeah. And it's the kind of thing where it should... You know when Mega Man slides? It yeah. should just be like that. Yeah, yeah. It's But it's not. It's, like, broken. So the controls are bad for that. But fortunately, like, I didn't really use the slide, and I was able to get through the game anyway. So it's like, you don't really need it anyway. But what the game's issue is and why it's so difficult is um, because it's very particular. You've got to know um, exactly where to stand. This game is all about positioning. Um, so I'm going to give an example from another game. So he, if you ever play Battletoads, there's a boss on Battletoads. I, I could use a million examples. I, but- I, I've played Battletoads. Right. I just wanted to let you know. I've played it. I know you play Battletoads. But um, <laughs> so on level eight of Battletoads, there's a robot. Yes. And the robot bounces up and down like yeah. this. And he's jumping all over. And when he hits the ground, you have to be in the air. Because if you're yeah. on the ground, when he hits the ground, it shakes. And then he like punches you or whatever or kicks you. I, I hate that. In Mega Man X, there's, there's an enemy that does that. Yeah. And the timing of it is so precise now you don't take damage but the timing of it is so precise that if you jump just as he jumps nah that's right. too early so i'm, I'm just using <laughs> that as an example of, yeah so on that like you got to know certain things like oh i got to be in the air here or i got to be in this certain position i got to be on the right side not the left side here it's very much like that where right. you have to be exactly in the right space in this game there's a part where you're on a boat yeah. And there was like a sea monster in front of you and you're, and he's throwing like daggers or something at you and you're supposed to grab the yeah. daggers and chuck them back. But you have to be at the right height when you throw the dagger back. So if you jump really high, it's going to go over his head. Or if, you, or if you're standing on the boat, the you tentacle throw it, will hit it. it's going to go underneath. Like you have to just jump a little bit yeah. and, and toss it and it's kind of hard to do. So everything in the game is all about positioning and I think that that's what makes this game hard there's other m- monsters in the game where they're like there's like these purple slug kind of um, what do I even call them like uh, I don't even know what they are like uh, mud monsters or something that come okay. out of the ground and you have to they, they'll spit at you and when they spit at you you have to like be far enough back that you're not going to get hit by it. then you then after they spit then you got to know to go forward club them and then like keep moving and it's very particular and it's like it's kind of annoying yeah where that's when i feel like oh i'd rather play wampaku graffiti because it's just it's so like you have to know exactly what to do or you're gonna die yeah i i noticed from your playthrough on uh twitch that there are Points in time where it's like, okay, there's going to be like two chunks that come at you from the bottom. So I want to be there so I can hit them. Yeah. And you kind of just need to know that they're going to come from the bottom. Now he's going to come from the right. Oh, now he's going to come from the yeah. left. And if you don't do those things, like you can't dodge it. You're, you're just going to get hit. You're going to get. So what it is, is it's a trial and error game. Right. And. I guess where the fun comes in is if you play it over and over and over, you can get to the point probably where you can get like really good at it and you know, then you know exactly where to stand I, and where to be. And that can be fun, but you have to like that kind of thing. I watched a speed run of this game. Yeah. And it's like, come on, man. Like you watch it. Everything is memorization. It's yes. all muscle memory. It's all. But when they do it, it makes the game look stupid easy. Yeah. But it's not. It's not. Not not when you first play it, but there's a lot of games like that. I feel like Castlevania's like that. Yeah. Like, I've gotten to the point um, where I was able to beat Castlevania without dying and stuff like that, and Castlevania's the same, like, way. It's, like, knowing exactly where to be, how to jump over things. Like, the knights in the, Castlevania. I was about to say, the yeah. knights with the Medusas. Right. When you, if I go up there right before the Grim Reaper, 
with the knights and the medusas. People will look at that and be like, wow, you're awesome at games because I'm dodging the medusas and the knights and I'm and you chasing have to know, them. And the holy water. You jump in the air, you chuck the holy water, it's going to hit the ground and it's going to kill that shit. Yeah. Like, but the first time you play that, you you're don't like, know any of that shit. What do I do? Yeah. It's, yeah. Yeah, but it looks really cool yeah. when you do it, right? Yeah. But it's really more about knowing than like your skill. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, but I mean, there is skill There's required. Skill, but timing and stuff. It's that there is skill. Yeah. It's, it's like it's both. Yeah. And those are my favorite games. You know that it's like you have you have to have the skill and you have to have the know how. It's like you have right. to have everything. Ninja yeah. Guidance like that. Right. You know. Yeah, I, lo I love watching people play that. Yeah. So this game though, uh, it's be it's beautiful to look at. They did a fantastic fantastic job, like on on the visuals. Um, I can't remember too much about the music. I don't think there's anything to stand out about that. But I mean, it, it's a splatterhouse game. I don't think it's you know, um, hey. when you, because when you think of Castlevania, you think of all that great music. You don't really think about amazing music too much. It's nothing wrong with it. But I'm just thinking to myself, I don't really like recall any tunes from it. I I think it's funny that like if you take horror games, they're kind of in two two like columns. There's like games that are into the gameplay and it's more about like thematic mm -hmm. and then there's games that try to scare you mm. like with jump scares or like creepy things like this has some like gross out stuff but it's all very like like you have power yeah you're not you're not powerless no not at this. all like, like rick's a badass rick's a badass you're a badass you you belong there yeah like like we're gonna you're gonna beat them with a bat you know <laughs> It's not. It's not like uh, you're scared and you're yeah. running or you're. There, there's powerful forces. You know what this game is? This is this game is the original Dying Light. Yeah, because you're just going around bashing people's heads in. And right. shit. Like, <laughs> that, that's where what it's, what it is. I like that. And then I should briefly at least mention uh, Splatterhouse Three. Splatterhouse Three. They took the same. I didn't play this recently, but I know that they take they took the same formula sort of. And no, well, no, they didn't. They they mixed up the same formula and did something a little different this time, where. This one's more like time based, okay. Where you gotta make it to the end uh, quickly, and the, like like we were just saying, how like you can become sort of a perfectionist at it and get better at it, right? The better you get at the game, the quicker you can get through it, and then you get a good ending if you can get I see. really quick enough, which I think is kind of cool. So there's like a countdown and where you are in the countdown, and this also has like a map system, so you know yeah. like which rooms to go in and stuff. So they, I like that they did something different with it, um, but. I'd rather play Wong Baku Graffiti. Yeah, it's still it, this is not, these are both like pretty good games though. Right. So, yeah, I recommend any of these games right. honestly. So you brought it, but do you have anything to say about the 360 game? Uh, I haven't played it yet. You haven't so, played it. So the the only reason I brought it is because everybody brings it up whenever you start talking about, it, and they're like, "Oh, you haven't played that the 360 one." And some people love it, and and a lot of people fucking hate it. Right. And I don't know why yet because I haven't done it yet. So okay. I'm just letting people know that I have it. It I know exists. About, I know about it. But so I didn't coming get to, it yet. to a stream near you Eventually. at some time. Yeah, maybe. Sometime in the future, maybe. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I brought a game that is all about being scared snip 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 i brought clock tower yeah i was gonna bring clock tower for super wait, wait wait before you get into your game though I, ha I have one more game to talk about okay and this is it's way scarier than any of this shit okay okay so I the game of life game. well that's the most scary that's but, the most scary but have, oh have you played this konami game this Let is by see. konami <laughs> so mike just handed me a game called breeding stud yeah yeah and it's all about uh, horses. Okay, that's it. Joke's over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's no, funny. So I, I got this. So why'd you get it? Was, it? What's I the story? Was, I thought it was funny. Oh, yeah. I was playing a lot of shitty horse games on Wii. Yeah. And then I stumbled on this, and I was yeah. like, that's fucking funny. But what's even funnier about the fact that it's called Breeding Stud is the fact that Konami, like, yeah. Made, but I mean, it's just like a fucking well, horse they, game. They, when they made that game, there was no way. They didn't. They It wasn't going to come out. It no. wasn't going to come out here. No. no. Dude, they probably have a slot machine of that game that they make like billions of dollars off of. <laughs> like, <laughs> like you know, you the, you go to you go to Japan where casinos, uh, uh, pachinko or whatever, and there's probably a row of breeding studs there for you to play with. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, like I said, it was terrifying. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm scared. I don't want that thing near me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank it's you. Gone. It's gone.
All right, so clock, clock tower. tower. So, <laughs> so we were sitting down and for the concept for this episode, and I love the look of uh, Scissor Man, and I thought that you know, Clock Tower is a game that that people really care about. Um, the original Clock Tower came out on Super Nintendo, did not a Super Famicom, just like One Pocket Graffiti, didn't come out in the U.S. There's fan translations; you can download it, but I don't really recommend that well wait wampaku graffiti is on regular famicom is regular famicom and then this and then this is on super Super famicom Famicom. but they're both unreleased in the united states right 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 right. which is the point um so i was like i'm gonna play that it'll play really well with splatterhouse because they're both classic games so you're gonna play the super famicom the super famicom version okay so i started playing it and you, you you know i i think this is a game that probably has a great story it probably has a lot of tension with Scissor Man and all of that. Um, I couldn't get through it because it is so slow. Yeah. You walk like this. Very slow. Okay. So I spent four and a half minutes in the first And is it room. like a D-pad, like clicking on stuff? Yeah. Mm. You move the D-pad. I don't know if it supports the Super Nintendo mouse. Probably should if it, if it doesn't but it doesn't really matter because your character like the mario paint map yeah Yeah. your character walks so slow and the music is good it's creepy i've watched playthroughs of it and when you watch playthroughs of it you're like boy i would really want to play this game so i'm like well i'm not gonna play that but i still want to know about scissor man and i'm like i'm gonna go all the way up to clock tower 3 on ps2 if i have to i am playing a clock tower game Mm -hmm. but luckily i didn't have to go that far because i played clock tower on playstation playstation and clock tower on playstation is clock tower 2 in japan okay it is a direct sequel it's in the same universe Mm -hmm. um clock tower 2 there is a sequel to this that is called Clock Tower 2 here. You know what I see on the box? It says, yeah. um, I don't know how to pronounce it. ASCII. But it's, it's ASCII. Yeah. I have that controller. The little the the, ASCII. The, the hand. Yo, okay, check it out. So in the in the box for this, there it is. Yeah, oh yeah, there it the is. The ASCII yeah. grip. This yeah. is the one-handed... Uh, so this is a game you'd use it for. Yeah, this is a game you'd use it for. Okay. One-handed RPG controller, because PlayStation has a lot of uh, JRPGs. Um I know. So I have a question about that though. Yeah. Like I'm totally fine with that. Like I could do that and, that, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that. That's fine. But why? Why not just use the regular controller? What's the difference? Oh, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. Uh, I can't think of a reason to be totally honest. Because you're gonna jerk off while you play Clock Tower with, you know, with sure, one hand, and then you're gonna play the game. With I the other sure hand? hope not. I mean, that's the joke, right? That's the joke that everybody makes when they talk about one-handed controllers. But I, I have no idea. But not, maybe you're flipping you know what through. I mean, though? Maybe you're maybe you're flipping through the strategy guide. I, you know. Oh, you got the you got the Prima strategy guide over here, and then you got the, your controller over here. Is right. that the idea? I, like I don't even get it. I don't know. And ASCII made some good controllers. Actually, the ASCII ASCII uh, six button turbo pad for Genesis. Yeah. No, I'm not shitting on that controller. Yeah. I think it's a fine thing. I just. You could do this, or you could do this. It's right? Like, why? Yeah. If it's, you already have this controller, why buy that? It's re- so, well. Like, one thing I have to say is the uh, L. It's literally so you can jerk off. You think? Well, what's? Because tell me honestly, I'm like not even trying to make a joke. Oh uh, well. What, okay. So, so you can watch TV and have your so, con- remote control in your other hand. So there are. Yeah, but you're playing the game on the TV. It doesn't make sense. R- right. The, uh, yeah, the yeah. Uh, trigger buttons, L1, L2, R1, R2, are at the bottom. Yeah. So if you had a game that was like big on the trigger buttons, you might do that. You know, it's it's kind of almost like this controller would be a cool controller to do like a fighting game challenge. You know, <laughs> they do like the ones where like they use like the DDR pad or yeah. whatever and they fight. It'd be interesting to see how people do with this. Right. Because like you it's have like to- It's like when I, I joke about like, oh, I'm going to beat Ninja Gaiden with an Atari controller or something. Right. Or stuff like that. Yeah. Like, like that kind of thing. Anyway, I'm getting we're getting way off. We're getting way here. off. So, so ASCII published the game. They made the controller. That controller would work fine for this game because this game is not... It's a point-and-click adventure. And in this game, it is... You start in a like a research lab, like an academic place, mm-hmm. where they have the girl from the first game, and she is being uh, hypnotized to try and find out who the Scissor Man killer was. Okay. And 
this game is a game that is meant the the developers built it because they they meant it to be played multiple playthroughs. Do you think that they were thinking about Edward Scissorhands, or is that a stupid thought? No, wasn't that popular at the time? No. So the mythos is is that it's like a a murdering child. Okay. Like a kid. Yeah. And it, like, there's not like he just holds the scissors. Mm-hmm. I think they just wanted a unique weapon to make it visual. So, so it's different than. And so he else. has a name. Like Scissor Man's cool. Right. Like if. If if you came to me with a bunch of like VHS tapes and we're like we're gonna watch a horror movie and and it's like Scissor Man oh yeah it's a guy with scissors that's creepy it's more about like like Leatherface has the chainsaw Michael yeah. Myers has the knife Freddy has the glove and he's got the scissors yeah that's that's why yeah yeah so so the weird thing is there's actually two characters that you could play as you could play as Helen and you could play as Jennifer. Okay. But there's no character select. Is it Jennifer from Splatterhouse? Uh, c- no, no, it's not. She's she has dark <laughs> no, hair. <Mike. laughs> no, it's not. Shut so, up. <laughs> so Jennifer is the survivor yeah. of the first game, and although I, I think her name is different in like the fan translation I played of the first game, but anyway, she's the survivor. And the way you pick which one you're going to be is at the very beginning you play as the doctor. And he goes away. Um, but there's a guy in the hallway. Okay. And if you talk to him one or two times, you play as Helen. But if you talk to him three times, you play as Jennifer. Okay. And you find a hint later in the game. There are 10 hints that you can find that have it so you, like tell you things about the game that you might want to try on a future playthrough. Yeah. And it's like it's like a hint that's pretty far in the game. Oh, you pick your character by doing this. You know, I have to say, so I. But it's really Ryan, bizarre. Ryan has a copy of this game behind. Here's Ryan's yeah. copy. I brought this um, just because I didn't know you had a copy of it. Yeah. But um, I have owned this for many years. I went through a phase years and years and years ago where I just bought up PlayStation games. Right. I've never played Clock Tower, but I've always right. heard about Clock Tower. Yeah. But then when I would look at it, I'd, I'd think. I don't know if it's my type of game. Don't play it. Because I don't... Don't play it. Okay. Okay, so this game is really like a... I like the character. Like, I yeah. like Scissor Man. He seems cool. It's it's a pioneering game in terms of, like, storytelling and, like, multiple endings. And it's a cool story and it's a fun horror thing and all that. The gameplay of this game, it's better than the Super Nintendo version. The gameplay is not very good. Because I'm going to tell you about all the gameplay right now okay which does not affect what ending you get doesn't really affect anything it's just something you have to do to see the next story okay so in the game you can walk around and there are two modes there's when scissor man is chasing you and when scissor man is not chasing you and when scissor man is chasing you you can walk to avoid him, and as long as you stay ahead of him, he moves very slow. I mean, is this game, the whole point of it is suspense because he's af- coming after yes. you? Yes. Okay. So it's like they could do an alien game or something in sure. the style with uh, like a so, Ridley on the ship or something. So when he's chasing you, you find a place to hide, or you find something like a, like a fire extinguisher to squirt him with or something to stun him. And if you stun him or hide, he goes away. But the thing you use to make him go away you can never use again. Ooh. So if I'm in this one room and there's a fire extinguisher, or there's a locker that I can hide in, or... I saw you playing it for a minute, and I know that, that he was coming after you, and then you hid in a bathroom. Can't you hide to make him now, go away? No, if I hid in that bathroom again, he would bust through the door and kill me. So you get to do it once. You get to do it once for each thing. But that runs contrary to the way that you do well in the game, which is to perform specific tasks. I'll tell you, there are three scenarios. So there's three locations that you go to in the game. And I'm going to tell you about the first scenario as Helen. So for Helen to escape from the the dormitory that she's in, she goes to sleep in the dormitory. Scissor Man comes in, kills her friend. Mm. Then Scissor Man is in the building. And you have to try to escape. But all the doors are locked. Everything is there. You need to find pliers. You need to find the key to the service room. 
You need to find the service room. You need to go down and get out. Those are the three things you need and to how do. How do you know that you need to do that? You don't. You don't know. So you just clear. I know because I looked at an FAQ because I was only going to play through the game once and I wanted to get the ending where they don't all die. Let's say you didn't have an FAQ. Would you just be like clicking on things randomly? You'd be walking around clicking things randomly. Here's more to the point. Hmm. In this level is a flashlight. You need the flashlight way in, in the third scenario. You go back to the house from the Super Nintendo game. You need that flashlight to look in a fireplace to get the banishing door spell that banishes Scissor Man at the very end of the game. Oh my God. What if you don't? And if you don't have that, Scissor Man just comes up and kills you. And then you have to play the whole game. Over. And then you have to play. And then you get one of the bad endings. And uh, then you got to play the game over again. Mm -hmm. So that flashlight that is in a random drawer in a random room at the beginning defines you get the flashlight. Also, it doesn't have any batteries in it. So you got to get the batteries in another level. Uh -huh. um, this is like imagine if in Mario Brothers in the first level there was a flashlight. And if you don't get that, you go into Bowser's castle and you can't see him and he kills you. I mean, this sounds like AVGN material at this point. Sure. M more to Where it's like, you know, Castlevania 2, yeah. there's good things about it, but there's also a lot of bad things about it. This, that's what this sounds like. Okay. The other important thing. There is... I Also, I haven't played it, but it, it doesn't seem like my type of game. There is a devil statue. Yeah. And the devil statue is in the... First room, or the second room of the game, here's the devil statue. Now, to the game's credit, they don't let you leave the room without making this decision. But you have to remember the decision you made and act accordingly, or it's impossible to win at the game. So the devil statue, uh, you talk to a, a, another person who works with you, and you say, oh, I want you to take the devil statue to either this investigator guy, this this academic investigator guy, or I want you to take it to the old groundskeeper of the building to ask them about it. If you don't remember what choice you made and go to that spot and get the devil statue, you won't have the devil statue. Now, if you give it to the research guy, you end up in there, yeah. in the building, where you have to, you're fighting Scissor Man, and you can escape the building without it. I recognize this, uh, the, the mannerisms you're giving, because it's the same thing that happens to me, like, I feel like when I played, like, King's Knight or something. Right. Because it's like you went through a traumatic experience. Yeah. And it's like, <laughs> it's like, you're, it's like you're telling me that... You, Mike, I was attacked, and you're telling me about it. That's what. That's like the tone, right? So I get, I get the statue, <laughs> but if I don't get it at the end of the game, I run across a bridge, and it's like this is very much like flashback or out of this world because yeah. he's coming, and you run across the bridge, and it got, and then he's or coming. Like the Re Resident Evil with like Mr. X coming after. So you kind of? he's coming, yeah. and he's coming. And he's coming. And I've never been in this room before. And I'm and I have the FAQ. The answer is on the paper. And I'm like, what the fuck do I do? He's coming. And you hear the sound of the scissors. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, okay. Do I have the statue? Okay, I do have the statue. I gotta put the statue on the shelf. So put the statue on the shelf. And the room starts shaking. And he gets sucked away <laughs> but in addition to that when the room starts shaking i have to go into my inventory and recite the spell to banish him and if i don't recite the spell to banish him i'm fucking dead so this game has never been about like twitch reactions or anything yeah, like that it's not like that um and then and then you're getting sucked away and he grabs you and then you had to talk to this other guy, the Stan guy. So Stan comes in, Stan, yeah, Stan. Stan comes in and shoots him. And then he lets go of you and gets sucked into the portal to hell or whatever, right? I watched the Jennifer playthrough. Yeah. You got to do all of that. 
But Stan doesn't come to save Jennifer. So when you're getting sucked away, you have to know to click in your inventory, click the dagger that you had to find, and stab Scissor Man. You have never stabbed anybody in the history of the game. Right. How do you know that? How do you even know? How would anybody, A, know that you got to talk to Stan three times to be Jennifer? B, Know that you had to have the statue. Know that you, the statue had to be in the right place. Know that you had to have the spell, which means you had to get the flashlight in the first level. You you know how you know though, huh? If you if you didn't have an FAQ, huh? Ryan, I beat this game when I was four. Right, that's the response you're gonna get. Oh, it's obvious. It is not fucking obvious. But I'm saying that's what people will say. I played this game when I was five and I beat right? it. Well, you know what? When you were five, <laughs> you had infinite time to play. And you had this game. This was it. You're in your house. All these games are good. There's none of this is here. And you have this game. And your PlayStation is upside down because it's overheating because it's a pile of shit. And you have Clock Tower. And you you do nothing. For that month, but fuck around in Clock Tower. And eventually... So you're saying if you just had this game and you had enough time, that sure, maybe you could figure all this out. But if if you're going to devote a bazillion hours to it... But who has the time for that? Who 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 would go through all of that? Well, I'll tell you what. Um, back then, though, yeah. there were less games. Maybe you were bored and maybe this was the game you had for like the summer... Yeah, and then you could figure that kind of thing out. But in the era we live in, where like we're game, 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 like we go through the. I mm-hmm. feel like we have this conversation all the time. But the, like, there's a different game all the time. Back then, like if you had three PlayStation games and this was one of them, maybe you had the time to figure that out. But I can tell you this: these days, I would not. I would not do that. I, I, I my concern is this: I used to play like the, um, the Sierra games. Like, this is like that. L- I, right. Yeah. I used to play. I I played a game called uh, like Gabriel Knights, and I played King's Quest, and I played Space Quest, and a lot of that kind of stuff. And back then, I liked those games, believe it or not. Right. Um. But I think that if I played those games today with all the other games that I've played since, I think they would bore me to fucking tears. Yeah. And I don't know that I can do that kind of stuff anymore. I feel like, for me, it might be a little, like an outdated way to play. So. It definitely is outdated, and the voice acting is hellishly bad. And it's like, it's like they got like guys from the office to be like, Helen, we need to go to the hotel, Helen. When you fucking said the office, I thought you were going to do something like Dwight or something. No. <laughs> so I'm like, oh, the office. Okay. No. Yeah. Yeah. Like they got people like, just who did they get? Yeah, they they got like a guy who works there. He's like mopping the floor. Yeah, and no, they got I heard him. a little of the voice acting was very. Yeah, yeah. it's just like the yeah. clock tower murders. It was are, very dead. It's like yeah, wow. Um, but the other thing, earlier you told me that you still kind of like it. Though. I still kind of like it. One thing I like about it is the game is very grounded. It's very not supernatural till the very very end. Okay, so it's like. Basically, it's like Scooby-Doo rules. Like, you get to the end and you're like, oh, wow, it was him the whole time. Yeah. And then she's like, oh, you know, we want to, there's like a false, and there's like a false climax yeah. in it. And the false climax, I think, is very clever for a video game at this time. And you get through that and you could get to the false climax and get through that and not have done any of the shit I just told you about with the statue or anything like that. But then it's like, Oh, well, Scissor Man is still around. So there was two Scissor Men. The, the Scissor Man that was in uh, Norway in the first two scenarios was that guy. Okay. But the Scissor Man that's in England in the, the final chapter, that is the real one, the one that attacked Jennifer originally or related to uh, uh, a. Victim of the same dark forces, yeah, from the first game. So, that in that, once you get in that room, a lot of supernatural stuff happens and it's fucked up. So, I'm sitting in this building, it's two in the morning, I'm by myself, 
and I'm sitting recording my game footage. And I go into a room and Stan is in there and he's laying against the wall. And it's like, he's like, we got separated when Scissor Man came. And there are bones of children on the entire floor of this room. And then the ghosts of the children start singing. Yeah. And I'm like, fuck this game. <laughs> this is like, don't do not do this. Creepy children yeah. has nothing to do with the story at all. It also helps that you're playing it. Like, if we had the game on right now and it's the same scene yeah. in this environment with all these, like, lights on, it yeah. probably wouldn't be as scary. But you're playing at, you know, 2 o'clock in the morning. And that's what people say to me. They're, they're like, well, why don't you play some of these, like, horror games? And I'm like, you know that, like, when I stream, like, I got big, like, lights on me and shit? Yeah. And then if I, you know what happens sometimes? I don't turn the light on because I forget. And then there's always a guy in the chat and he's like where's your light turn the light on <laughs> and i'm like how do you fucking even tell how can you right. tell because your- i'll just have like the ceiling light on yeah and i'll forget to put the main light and they fucking know right and, um, anyway the point is games are scary and they're dark yeah. yeah so it's two in the morning i'm in a building there's sounds like i don't control everything that happens in this building and i'm sitting there and i'm like so i'm like i'm gonna make a tweet about it yeah, and and so that that gives you a point in time when we recorded this episode. So so I tweet about that, and I'm in there, and then I go into this side uh, study uh, in the game, and uh, a fucking disembodied hand comes out and starts like grabbing my character's throat and trying to get me. Yeah, and then I have to click on it, and then I throw it off my neck and throw it on the thing, and then you have to know to pick up a knife and stab it and you impale it so now a disembodied hand has choked me yeah i have and it's stuck and it's still wriggling yeah, yeah. on the the desk and and i'm like okay so stan has seen ghosts people have seen a hand and everyone's acting like it's fine where the guy, like the actual scissor man, is he like a real dude? So it was like a guy. So it goes from like, oh no, it was the guy the whole time. Yeah. And then it's like, now now a disembodied hand happens. Ghosts are singing. Stan is like, man, I, don't, I can't go forward after this. And then I walk <laughs> into a church in this thing and Jennifer is being crucified. Whoa. And then Scissor Man's back, <laughs> so I shoot him. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna cap Scissor Man, <laughs> and I shoot him. And that all happens, and then it's like, oh, I gotta go in the basement. Here's another fucked up thing at the end of that game. You get to the basement of it, and there are three. This is like going back to Indiana Jones, the cups. Oh, yeah. There are three stairways. Okay. And if you go Pick di- the right one. Pick if you if you go down the wrong stairway, it's just over. Yeah. But I was looking at FAQ, so I know. You have to go to a side room and get these ball bearings. And you have to drop the ball bearings down. And if you hear water, that's bad. That's bad. Okay. But then if you hear it hit the dirt, oh. That's the one you go down. And how are you going to know to go to the side room to get the ball bearings if you're not looking at a fucking strategy guy? Right. And then you get to the bottom and then you're in the creepy satanic bridge room and that's where it ends. And you better yeah. have your hell statue and your your magic door spell and you better have talked to Stan in the room with the creepy children and you better be ready to go. And if you're Jennifer, you better have a knife <laughs> because Scissor Man's coming. And you do it and then you get the good ending. Otherwise, you get a bad ending. The bad ending is Scissor Man comes and fucking kills you or the... <laughs> The castle gets blown up, or the castle doesn't get blown up, but Scissor Man is the only survivor because he kills everybody. So, like, you could get there's eight different ways this game tells you to go fuck yourself, <laughs> you know. And there's really only one one way out for each of the the ladies, and and that's Clock Tower. It sounds like a fucking nightmare. It's a fucking nightmare, but it's a good good time to watch on YouTube. <laughs> Because I'll tell you, I watched the Jennifer gameplay. Yeah. And like, I, having played it, I had like investment yeah. in frustration. And I'm like, oh, now Jennifer's doing things. And I watched it. 
and it's good. And this game, if it had slightly better control, if it was slightly clearer what was going on, if there was a few things that were there, this would be a horror classic to the tune of Resident Evil. Mm -hmm. But it's an interesting hot pile of garbage. <laughs> I'm still going to probably play Clock Tower 2 and 3, though, because... Maybe they fixed it. What were the? Is that PlayStation One as well? Or is so that... Clock Tower Two is PlayStation One, and Clock Tower Three, which is technically four, you know, PS2. is on PS Two. Okay. Yeah. Um. But but yeah, I mean, I think that this is a game. You know, we talk about games we love, like Until Dawn. Yeah. That are like the super high budget value version. You, I have a question. So you played the PlayStation One version? Did and you talked earlier about we were talking about playing it with the Super Nintendo mouse. Did you play it with a D-pad? I played it with a D-pad and it didn't matter. It was fine. Okay. Because the, there is a mouse for PlayStation. Yeah. The cursor moved fast enough. Fast enough. Let's see. It says mouse compatible mm -hmm. on it. So this is one of the few PlayStation and mouse games. And then you can games. sit on your couch with a mouse. Yeah. Should, this, I feel like this game should just be on PC. It should, but it's it's Japanese as hell, man, and that's why it's it's not on PC mm -hmm. because because of that. But uh, this game includes scenes of graphic violence of a grotesque nature. Does it? Oh, dude, one one thing. This is like PS Super PS One. Yeah, the shadows that are on you are fine when they're all clumped together. <laughs> but if the camera zooms out too much, the shadows are just black rectangles. Like boxes. Black box rectangles. It's funny. Oh, my God. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Oh, the other thing is this game is super expensive. Um, just emulate it. This is like a $140 game. Um, so this would be about $300 here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> No, and all I take very good care of my games, actually. Yeah, you know. So, um, I'm happy I have it in my collection because it's cool mm -hmm. and Scissor Man's cool. But uh, there is no reason to buy this game. It's well available in emulation. Yeah, and the emulation is fine for pointing and clicking. You're not worried about frame rate. You're not worried about anything. Would you rather play Wang Paku Graffiti every time? <laughs> every time that's a video game yeah this is an experience an experience yeah that's, that's, a, fun, that's a fun right. way to put it yeah that's yeah. great though. i feel like there's gonna be people in the comments that that are because this is like a beloved game yeah especially like retro game guys i feel like some people do you think people are gonna be angry with your opinion i mean i don't think i, I shit you play, on it you played through it i played through it i, I there's a lot of things you like about it there's things i like about it yeah that's the thing very rarely, like like a lot of games are like open and shut. This is great. This sucks. Yeah. There's so many things that suck about this game, but I wouldn't like if somebody on the street came up to me like, "Oh, what do you think, Clock Tower?" I wouldn't be like, "Oh, it sucks." Right. I'd be like, "It's got all these problems." And that's how I feel like with Splatterhouse too. I'm like, I'd be like, "Oh, it's cool, but watch out because yeah. this, this, and this." Yeah. yeah. So we both kind of have games like that, right? Yeah. But I think with One Pocket Graffiti, we're both like, "This is a good game." Well, One Pocket Graffiti is good. Splatterhouse Two is a little problematic. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's still good though. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys, that's it for now. Hope you enjoyed. That was Splatterhouse Clock Tower. Uh, what else? What else we got? We're going to tell them to like and subscribe and have a happy Halloween. Oh, another thing. Also, I, I don't think we've ever mentioned, you know, you can, if you guys are only watching this on YouTube, you can also listen to this show, uh, like if you're driving in your car or whatever, put on Spotify or where any of those services. All right? the podcasts of Spotify, Apple, iHeartRadio, you can find it all the places. Yeah, so I just want to mention that. So the guys that are watching on YouTube, you know, you can listen to it as well yeah. in, in audio form. Yep. Yep. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. See you later.